So right now, simple one, we're just going to try you going vertical. I would love to believe that I love poems, but I'm not good with words. And slowly, I realised that through images itself, I can actually create things in my mind. When I was a kid, maybe about 3-5 to five years old, we lived in a 12-storey high HDB in Arjuni Road. There's a lot of drug addicts there at that moment. And one day, there was this guy who actually carried me up and pulled me over the corridor ledge and just held me out in the air. In that experience itself, I see my first death. That's when I realised that humans will die. And that's when I realised that my parents one day will die too. The experience of death inspired me to see life journey as a whole. So there's always a beginning when we are born, and there's an ending where we die. But whatever that happened in the journey itself, that matters to me the most because I can decide what to do with it. When I was 13 years old to 16, I was a competitive table tennis player. I got national third for under 14 and under 16. When I decided that arts is something I wanted to do, I actually collected all my pedals and trophies and just threw them all away. Because from that day onwards, there's only one thing that I'll do whenever I'm free. It's not table tennis, it's not any other thing, but photography. I am competitive with myself. So in the sense that when I create work itself, I want the work to, to progress, to truly reflect who I am. So table tennis as well, the same thing. When I play, it doesn't matter if I win or I lose, but it matters if I play well or not. I knew Eileen when I was like 13 years old actually, and for some reason, she reminded me of a giraffe. Because she's tall and you know, just really cute and from first sight, you know, I'm kind of like drawn to her. And especially at that moment, because me being a bit naughtier, I got some attention from the other girls. Yeah, and she's the only one that ignore me. There's only one, you know, thing or person that I cannot live without. Having her by my side, complete the whole picture of what my art is about. I don't see her as my wife. I see her as myself, actually. Sometimes I just think that maybe she doesn't even exist. I created her in my head and I'm just talking to myself. I would love to take life lightly, so there's always a sense of humour in my work. There's always this surface image of something light-hearted, but the lingering part of it is when the melancholy bits comes out. I photographed the zoo that I used to go very often as a kid. When I see those animals in the zoo, I always feel that they are very happy, like a cartoon, but as an adult, I don't feel the joy anymore. I feel their sadness. Also, I start to wonder, is it me who is looking at them, or are they actually looking at me? And we are no different from them, except we live in a much bigger stage. So I want the two dimensions of things to happen in one singular moment. It's also a reflection of what I'm feeling then as a kid, to what I'm experiencing now as an adult. I always aim to achieve an image that, is actually, that looks simple and intriguing. Yeah, an image that makes you feel that you can also do it. Yeah, so that you can relate to it much more, uh, you know, closer. People. I have this favourite cartoon called Doraemon, Xiao Ding Dang. And Doraemon can always pull out whatever he needs, whenever he's trying to solve a problem. So that's my kind of attitude. 
I have to learn the craft of photography as a medium, so when I want to express something, I can always pull out the right tool for the right image. So I've never been a equipment crazy kind of a photographer. Even now I only own one camera. Yeah, I think that's all I need. I was in Paris or London? London. So I received an email from the deputy photo editor, Joanna. So she called me and she wants to collaborate something with me and then she wants to do a special issue. So it's quite an, an honour and also a prestigious thing to, to work with them because they, they are quite like an institution in New York City. So it gives you a sense of uh, being recognised by your own community. Okay, right now there's a sense of jumping. So try to do it slow. So we up there, you almost feel that you are up there for a long time, you know? Okay, good, take a break. I like the face. Not, not crazy about the leg, but we can use the leg of the other one. Yeah. yeah. We can do better at this. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay, we can record once again. Yeah, this is very nice. It's the very last one. Yeah. Put this in for me. Yep. I love this shot. I'll be back. Let me just try one thing. Okay. Uh, can I have a camera? So when I'm close up like this, I see so much gap. Mm -hmm. I couldn't sense that there's a lot of information packed in this brain. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you'd be able to tell one equation from the next equation. So nobody's going to read it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, stop. And uh, roll forward for me. Face there. Correct. Think throat. Okay, right now it's just so beautiful. You think eyes close better? Open. Okay, try it. Open. Yeah. I like the expression that you have here, Dylan. Your expression this time is good. Just nothing. Wow. I miss that shot. This is gorgeous. Uh, that was yeah. perfect. It's very like, nice. The legs are perfect, the arms yeah. are perfect. The face, the it's eye. It's like floating. Uh, I know. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, going into the zone, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> I love this shot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's great. In the way I live my life here, more like an outsider, because I don't socialize, I don't go meet anyone you know and hearing from my accent and knowing me I'm actually very much living in Singapore mentally so New York City is more like a cave for me a remote place where I actually uh, do my thinking and create my art I treat more like being a stranger in a new place for the last 12 13 years to enable me to lead a more elusive kind of life That's why Strangers also become a very big theme in my work as well. I remember when I was a kid, I have this big, bad habit, I guess. Uh, I follow people. Where they go, I just follow. I just want to see what they're doing. They're buying things, they're drinking coffee, they're having a lunch, they're you know, communicating with someone. I just observe. And uh, by following them, I feel that I, I actually... I feel free, actually. The person that you see in this photograph itself, they are not they are all not in the the room. They were actually photographed on the street of New York and I digitally put them together into the room itself. So you see, I'm actually quite a shy guy. When they're about to speak I run away. <laughs> I turn around and walk away and pretend to be like a tourist. You know, every time I try to do a project on myself, I, I try to to behave like a tourist, behave like uh, an outsider. Yeah, so all these little changes in time and in space, you know, all these things fascinate me. Yeah, even when I travel in, on the plane itself, when I 
go into a zone between day and night so I'm always curious I always open a window and try to see the difference between both yeah the night time and the daytime it questions about my existence especially when you're in the air so you feel like you're in a limbo zone where you're actually nowhere so I'm trying to visualize myself in that moment and try to pinpoint where exactly uh, I am in this universe what good or what bad can I do or do I even exist And this is the beginning of uh, the Skype series where I walk into the frame and stand together with my family as a family portrait. <laughs> because me and my parents, we are, we are separated between two continents. <laughs> they are all a part of me missing them and try to recapture the past experience that I have with them in my art. So when I do when I did that project itself, also I started to wonder what if I actually expand this series to the other families, you know, and uh, and have everyone reconnect to this whole art process. Okay, kitty pie. Okay, they're, they're showing the picture. That's the winning shot. Thanks for thanks for waking up so early. By by having these different families to be involved in the in such a process itself, I. I think, I mean, at least I think, I managed to have them remember that particular moment. And it's a mark of a time where they will always remember that moment when they are all together doing something that they have never done it before. Bye -bye. Say again, bye-bye. I get my ideas from observation of the, the world I live in. Yeah. Instead of actually using iPhone or camera to, to capture the image itself, I actually use my eye and my memory and words to note down what I observe. It's the same thing when 9-11 uh, I was here and I saw the whole second plane crash into the tower and how the whole tower collapsed. At that moment we were living like two or three blocks away only. So, that memory always stays in my head and I try to relieve it in my head and then tell myself that um, the world can be actually peaceful at one moment and not peaceful the next. That's why I'm talking to you now that I, I may not know if I'm alive tomorrow. I'm not scared of dying. I feel that it's more of uh, the anticipation of mortality. I mean, what's the end of it? I always want to make sure that you know, the moment I depart from this world, I want to cherish that, uh, that few seconds just before I leave. I want to know that, okay, I'm leaving. Okay, this is the moment, this is the moment. Okay, I am leaving. Okay, done, I'm, I left. Yeah, and what's next after that? On the first page of my notebook itself, I actually write down the word to live and breathe. And of course, we know that, you know, we breathe to stay alive. But to me, the true meaning of living is to absorb, to breathe in all the experience in our life and take some risks in it and then still be good. And at least that's how I live my life.